Hello and welcome to SketchUp Assist. Today we're going to be talking about groups. Uh, groups are a very powerful tool within uh, SketchUp. Uh, and we're going to kind of explain why you want to look at groups, uh, how you can create groups, uh, why they're so important, and frankly, how they're going to make your life a bit easier. So let's start off with a couple of geometries. And let's start to investigate uh, some of the issues that you might run into when you're creating complex geometries. Um, so if you look at these two rectangles that we put here, um, on first observation, they appear to be independent. Um, and to some extent, they are. You can come in and perform operations on these and um, act on these different geometries independently. But you really start to see some issues uh, when you try to uh, move some of these geometries around. And in particular, let's select this side. And let's go into move and let's drag this around. So what's happening is that these geometries are merged. They share this line segment. And, and in SketchUp, by default, when you draw two uh, independent geometries uh, against one another like this, they share a line segment. Those, those geometries then become merged. And that can be okay sometimes. Um, but if you do want to move this around independent of, of you know, this geometry around independent of just this geometry, then you will, uh, you will run into this issue. Um, and so there's a way to resolve this in SketchUp. And we do that by using groups. So let's take a look. So let's start over fresh here. Uh, let's open or create a new geometry. Um, and, and let's look at a couple things. So first off, uh, notice also what happens um, if I want to move this geometry around. Now, this is a ungrouped. Um, and if I grab this, what's going to happen is it's as akin to what we saw in the two geometries, the merge geometries. Uh, you don't exactly get the move behavior that you might expect. And so when you grab a vertex, you're going to pull only the segments or, or move the segments only attached to that vertex. And notice how the other two segments stay fixed. Um, the other thing to notice, too, and, and just keep this in mind, is when you hover over this, uh, you, you don't see line selection. And so that's uh, getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but you will see this in a few minutes. Uh, so let's, let's start again. Let's get a fresh geometry here, and let's create a group. And so what you want to do is go into select mode, double click in that geometry that you want to create a group out of. And you'll notice that uh, the line segments around it are highlighted and the surface is highlighted. And then you're just going to right click and make that a group. And now the first thing we'll look at is when you come in here, let's first clear the selections here and go into move mode. So notice nothing is selected. However, when I hover over that group, and you can see on face and group, uh, when you hover over that on edge and group, you'll notice that all of the uh, line segments are selected. Okay, and so this is an indication that this is a group. And now when you grab any part of this group and, and drag it around, you drag the group as a whole. Now, uh, if you want to edit these groups, you, you have to be careful. And so what's going to happen when you're starting out is you're going to do something like this. You're going to have a group and you're going to say, hey, I want to add some complexity to my group. And you're going to come in here and you're going to draw a couple of lines and you're going to think that you have now extended this group or, or edited this group. And the reality is when you come in, um, you're going to realize, especially if you go to move that group, you're going to realize that it's actually not part of the group. And you can already tell that here when we hover over this group in move mode, notice the two black lines, we, the two lines we just added do not turn blue. They stay black. And in fact, if we grab this thing and move it, you will see that those two uh, segments stay where they are. And what you really have to get in the habit of doing uh, when you create these groups is you have to get into the habit of making sure that if you're going to edit the group, and you want to edit the group, you have to double click into that group and you'll see a bounding box here. And that shows you that you're in edit mode. And now you can come in and draw some lines in here. And, and now when we click out of this group and we go to move mode, you'll notice now that the, the entire group, all the the elements, so to speak, of the group are, are highlighted. And when I grab this group and move it around, they are, uh, they are in fact a group. Now, the other thing that you're going to run into, um, and, and it's probably going to scare you when you first do it, is that when you go to remove things in a group, if you don't have that group selected, you're going to see something like this. So let's try to remove these new lines and whoa, what happened? Uh, don't worry. So undo, we'll bring that back for you. Um, but what you have to realize is that if you want to edit a component of the group, you actually have to go into edit mode for that group. It's pretty natural, but it's a 
it's a habit that you're going to have to form. Um, and so uh, go into edit mode again, you just double click in the group. And now we're going to come in here and erase these lines that we added and click out. And now we come in. This is still a group. We've just edited that group. OK, now to um, finish off on the original issue that we were facing, the um, the the issue of, of geometry is becoming merged. Let's come in and extend our geometry here. So add some additional geometry. And then what we're going to do is come back into move mode and notice when we hover over this, our group turns blue and it doesn't include all of the new geometry we added. And if we move this thing around, there we go. We've solved the problem. So now we no longer are impacting the geometry of the neighboring uh, geometry or the shape of the neighboring geometry because these are no longer merged geometries. And that's because we drew this new geometry adjacent to a group. And, and that isolates that group from that uh, new geometry. Now, if you come here and try to move this new geometry, you're going to notice that you still have the same issue there, but that's fine. We can easily come in and fix that. So we just double click. Notice it's all selected. Just make it a group. And now when we go into move mode, we can easily move that around and we no longer have merged geometries. And so this is very powerful when you're creating components. Um, you can um, create sort of reusable components and, and move them around and rearrange them as needed. So think about if you're designing a kitchen and you're building the, the kitchen cabinets as individual groups, it's very easy then to, to move those cabinets around or rearrange them if you're experimenting with layouts. If you're doing something complicated like a door or a window in a building or furniture where you may have a table and chairs, you can do these as, as groups. And in fact, you can go one step further and let's show you how you can build groups within groups. And so let's go ahead and just extend this uh, group here. Uh, let's go back in. We'll use the offset tool and let's create a new geometry in here. And notice that we are now in, we're in edit mode on that group. So these changes we're making, we are making to that group. And now I've selected this section of the group and I can make that a group. And now when I come in and double click on that, now notice that my bounding box is around the child group and you can still faintly see the parent uh, group bounding box. Uh, so now I can come in and, and edit this component. It's something simple. I click out. Now we go back into edit mode of the parent group and click out one more time. And now we're out of edit mode and notice that this still acts as a single group, but I do have subgroups or child groups within that group that I can then manipulate. I can toggle them on and off or make copies of them. And there's a, there are a lot of very useful things that you can do that we'll look at later on in, in later videos. So this really is the top line things that you need to know about groups. They're very powerful. You should be using groups from the beginning. Uh, they're a, a key element of, of SketchUp. And um, what you've learned here will get you a very long ways. So good luck.